dat dansen goed is voor het lichaam. Daar zul je misschien niet van staan te kijken. Maar dat je met dansen ook je hersenen kunt trainen is misschien minder bekend. Toch is dat wat Andrew Greenwood doet in het dagelijks leven. Samen met patiënten die te maken hebben met ziektes zoals Parkinson, MS of dementie, beweegt hij op muziek om zo de hersenen te stimuleren. Hoe dat eruit ziet, dat zie je nu. wonderful uh, thing again about science is that they've come to the conclusion uh, so uh, epigenetics is basically how your environment affects your health so you are the architect of the experience so now they've realized that our cells all 50 billion of them are listening in to our thoughts so if you have a a positive environment, uh, a, a gazelle environment, where you have lots of uh, things to do. Uh, this actually can improve your health. So a good example, the local, the, the, the new bibliotheque here, this is a very good health intervention because uh, it gives people significance, it offers growth, and it offers people to come together. And scientifically, if you can put all those factors together, you're actually going to have a healthier person. Again, I keep going to science because um, this is very important. The music we listen to has an effect. So you can uh, stimulate people very easily from using Queen, Andre Hazes, Barry White. But if you really want to get the neuroplasticity and someone really thinking, you know, classical music, jazz music, that's more intricate and very quickly changing. I mean, our emotions can, can change so quickly. And again, emotions are energy and energy affects the whole, the whole body. I grew up in a sport family, so sport, uh, energy and uh, getting rid of energy for parents is very important. <laughs> so, um, and I wasn't so keen on the football or the rugby or the karate. I did it all because the rest of my family did. And then um, my grandmother said, you know, he's got so much energy, you've got to find something for him. So they threw me into this ballet class and I was being chased around for completely other reasons. <laughs> so it was a completely new world for me, very safe. And uh, it just seemed a lot more uh, healthy and organic than rugby to me. When you follow a vocation, so mine was ballet. I don't know why, but it was ballet. And um, in this world, it's a very high competition. In this world, there is a personal discipline. And in this world, as lovely as it is, there is a danger that you become egocentric. It's about me. It's about how I perform, how I get the roles, how the audience uh, appreciate my work. They're all lovely people, but it, it, you, you do get to this e egocentric. And now I'm ecocentric. I'm completely flipped because These people, um, they don't need sympathy, they need empath empathy, which is more understanding. When you're a dancer, you have what you call the fourth wall. So you, you can always keep a distance if you want. And here, that's a whole different new world. It's, so I would say I flipped from an egocentric person, a bit narcissistic, a bit me, 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 uh, to somebody that's uh, more ecocentric and more empathetic in general, thanks to them. So it's for you also a great experience. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, uh, if, if life gets in the way very easily, little problems can be massive. But if you work with people that have uncurable diseases and they are smiling, that just puts a whole different perspective on life. <laughs> We 
We shouldn't be afraid of using the word balance and spirit because we are, we are part of, of the bigger picture. And back to the basics is how we get people in the room. But if you can get somebody into a flow where they're really connected either to the group or, or in general, I think the word spirit and flow and creativity um, are words that we should continue to use. We shouldn't be afraid of them, I think. Because, and it's not about believing in, in, in God or Buddha or Allah. It's, it's about being connected. We all want to be connected. If you lose that connection, you've lost your spirituality. What I found out that actually working in this new world of uh, dance and health is that the more authentic the movement is, the more beneficial. So basically, we are metronomes. We offer a, a specific signature, and he or she has to in, take that in for themselves to make it authentic, meaning if they want to go left, they can if they want to go right. Because again, if you're working with people in a wheelchair, uh, we tell everybody to stand up. Now physically, maybe he or she can't stand up, but mentally they can. So self-esteem, very important. You know, if you tell somebody, uh, yeah, what are you doing? I'm dancing. Oh, but you have Parkinson's. How can you dance? Believe me, I can dance. You want to see me? So self-esteem, of course, the physiological, uh, and you see, you see the people starting to connect to themselves and others. So there's, there's a lot of communication going on. It's also very important to connect for people who doesn't have any diseases. This is very important because people that don't have disease, it's not that they don't care, they don't know how to react. So there is auto an automatic distance. I mean, I find myself, if I see somebody with a disability, sometimes you, you, you're not looking or connecting because you don't know, do they want you to connect? But they do, that's the thing. To the viewers out there, that uh, people with disability from a wheelchair to Parkinson's, there, is, uh, there are programs out there that, that people are very welcome to do. And it's also important that the mantle zorgers from these people, the loved ones, encourage them to take a step. It doesn't have to be a dance class, it could be a singing class, it can be pottery, it could be in, in the textile museum. But there is stuff out there and it's up to the mantle zorgers to actually encourage this to happen and they will see wonderful results. Mm -hmm.